Surprise, Camtasia 2022 dropped today and I'm super excited because this is a tool I use every day. Every video you see on this channel and on my educational stuff, if you have me as a teacher, uh, you see everything I make with this. Uh, so I'm really excited about the new stuff they have here. Uh, and getting started right away, there's a new home area here. Uh, so you can see that there's the normal stuff, there's some other things here, but the recording here, when you click this little icon, you have a Camtasia recording. Audiate and Snagit, which I own Camtasia and Snagit. I do not own Audiate. It's a little too much for me, uh, but there's options there for you. Uh, Audiate's pretty cool because it allows you to talk like I'm doing now. It will convert over to text, and then instead of editing audio, you can just type out the words or get rid of the words or change the order, and it will automatically redo the audio for you to fit what you want. It's pretty cool. Again, I haven't really played with it. There is a seven-day free trial. I might try it out when I have a chance but the end of the school year is coming, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, there's also this new templates area. So we can see that there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, five quick tips, there's a emphasis FX asset pack, product overview, and then a couple of things for apps and websites. And then you also have your default ones from other versions of Camtasia. Quick, taking a quick look here at this FX one, this one's the one that I think is the coolest. And these do take a little bit of time to open up. Uh, I'm here on an M1 Mac mini. Uh, so if we take a look here, we can go through, you have these new kind of all these little icons, these things. And the thing that I actually really find quite cool is this little grid system here. Now, this is not actually something built into the assets or anything like that. It's something they've built through uh, different groupings and stuff, but we can take a look at how that works. But you can see there's all kinds of stuff and I'm playing this slower than real time. So it looks a little choppy, but it's not when you're playing it uh, or when you export it. But you can see there's all kinds of stuff here. Uh, you can really just make things pop and go bananas if you want to. That's all well and good. Uh, nothing that does anything crazy for me. But again, still kind of cool to see what they have here with all of this. Now let's go over and uh, let's actually start a new project here. And we're going to blow it up full screen just so we can get a good look here. Uh, visually, everything is the exact same as what it was previously. There's nothing different. Uh, everything there is the same. Uh, but we do have a few differences when we actually start diving in through the menus. Uh, so the media bins, I haven't noticed anything different in there. They said there was, but there really isn't. The favorites carry over. So if you have a previous version of Camtasia that you favorited things, it carries right over, which is great. The library is vastly changed. So Camtasia 2022 has a whole bunch of stuff here. You have your audio, which is fine. And I think you lose all the kind of pictures that used to be part of the library. I don't see them anywhere in here, uh, but you get a lot more back for it. So if we go into like call outs or anything like this, there's counters now. Uh, I actually used to teach a Udemy class t teaching how to make these inside of on uh, inside of uh, on how to make these inside of Camtasia. But now there's a couple of default countdowns. So you have a 10 second one. This one starts at uh, 150 or 300. There's a countdown uh, again. Uh, you cannot change these from what I've seen. So if I were to drag this and bring it into the timeline, um, there's no editing for this. I can change the size of everything and kind of get it where I want. Uh, but when I go through here, there's no way to change the default time, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, they're kind of going with some set stuff. I wish it was a little different, but it's not too bad. Uh, you have your media frame counter, which again, I don't really know what that's gonna do, but you got it. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, there's some text and indicators, which I think are kind of cool. There's a, again, there's just a ton of folders throughout here uh, that we can go through, but there's lots of really cool things. So you have little animations that pop up and this is all customizable. Uh, some of them are good. Some of them are kind of dumb, but everything kind of just fits for somebody. So if you're doing step-by-step -step instructions, you can put in there, say, Hey, this is step one and you can edit the text and the colors as well. Uh, so it's really cool. Uh, this to me is by far the biggest update. I know they're advertising a couple other things as the headline features. To me, this stuff, making these little things easy and quick and uh, pretty, uh, just make things a lot easier uh, for the type of editing that I do. Again, I do screen recordings uh, and video editing, but uh, a lot of screen recordings I do are teaching software and this kind of stuff just helps out to draw out different items and to kind of get things set. Uh, so there's lots and lots of stuff. I'm not gonna go through everything because there's just tons of it. Uh, but if we go through here, let's just take a look at a couple of other things. They have this thing called Channel Kit, which if you're running a YouTube channel, it's really cool. Uh, so if I want to have a subscribe button pop up, I can have a really nice, 
easy one that looks good. I throw some sounds in there to make a little uh, wishy sounds, and boom, I have a, a ready to go thing. They have all kinds of stuff. They have glowing. You can level up your videos with the bells, like, and then you can put your logo and stuff in there. It's all really, really cool. And when you drag that into here, uh, I have it at 30. I'll convert it over to 60 FPS. But you can see you can put your logo. You can change any of those colors, so, and you can change what it says. This is kind of stuff that was started on in 2021's version of Camtasia, and now they've really hit the ground running with a lot of pre-made assets that are easy to do. Uh, you don't have to spend time making these things do what you want them to do. They're already kind of pre-made for you, which is awesome. I'm looking forward to using Channel Kit a bit here. Uh, if we go out of callouts, there's tons of other stuff. So this emphasis FX is kind of what we had before uh, when we we're talking, but there's a whole bunch of stuff here. So if I wanted the uh, hearts, let's say, we can look through here and we can starburst into hearts. Sure, we can do that. There's all kinds of stuff uh, and in the different colors, everything. Uh, and the nice thing is these are all on black backgrounds, but it's really not black when you put it into the thing. It's a transparent background. It's just black so you can see what's going on for this. Uh, but you have all kinds of stuff. So if I really want to target out something, I can go through here and say, hey, just like focus on this little area here. And these are scalable as well. So I can bring them down in size if I'd like. Um, a couple other things. You have uh, some overlays so I can have some gradients and stuff. Uh, I'm thinking these are going to be like... If you want to do uh, thumbnails, just throw something like this. It's a video file for some reason, but it's really just a static image. Uh, and you can go in and you can throw your picture on there or do whatever. And you have nice colors for things. This is also going to come back for something else in just a little bit that we'll talk about uh, for one of the other new features that I'm not in love with, should I say. But it just provides some cool features for you. Uh, but the gradients on there are going to be useful for one of the other new features it has. Uh, then we have our icons. Uh, again, these aren't really the best, but you can go through here and like, let's say, hey, you need an arrow. We can go through there and it's animated going down. Uh, they also have stills as well. So if you want static versions of all those, they have them. Uh, and then there's a couple other things. Like if I really want uh, Motor City is the only one they really have in here, uh, but they have all of the individual buildings, but you can also do cool animations like this that are pre-built, ready to go uh, and just look nice and uh, are set for you. There's a couple different title areas that you want if you can play in there. So nothing big deal. But again, just making life simpler that you can go through. It animates them for you. You just have to change the colors and the text and it will do different things for you. Uh, I don't really see a lot of lower thirds anymore, which is fine. Uh, but there are some other things like this quote one is really nice. You can pop up stuff. You have everything just type in for you. Uh, there's some other ones that I'd like better. I think this one, the expressive quote. Nope, not that one. Uh, there's another one in here that looks really kind of uh, web 2.0-y. There we go. See how like you just put the thing in there and then it'll disappear and it looks nice. But they have some good ones. And then there's a UI kit as well, which I haven't really had a chance to explore too much. I don't know what this does, but these are all just stock images. You have toggle on, toggle off, and we're good there. Uh, but this library is extensive. I have not had a chance to go through all of it. There's so much here uh, to look at. I I'm really, really excited with it. So let's go over and take a look at a couple of the other features. Jumping over into annotations, I don't really see anything new here. Uh, they look all pretty much the exact same as what was there before, and that's fine. These are good, uh, especially if you go to all shapes. Um, by default, when you have like the just abstract or anything, uh, they round off the corners, uh, which was one of my criticisms last year. But going into all styles, they uh, get rid of that. Uh, but everything else, from what I can tell, is the exact same as what it was in the past. Uh, in our transitions area, I think all these are pretty much the same, or if there are new ones, they're not super useful in my opinion. Um, again, there's no way to, like for this arrow slice one, if we take a look at it, um, there's no way to customize the colors. I would still love to have that feature. Uh, and you have a couple others, like I don't remember this card swap thing. It could have been there, but I don't remember. Uh, but a lot of them are a little gimmicky. I really just focus on fade. That's the only one I really use uh, for the most part here. Behaviors is unchanged, so you don't have to worry about that. Animations, again, is unchanged. You don't have to worry about that. The only one I really use is custom because it lets you have the most options. You have cursor effects, so we have some options in there. Uh, cursor smoothing, which lets you kind of get rid of any jiggle if you're going places, which is nice. Uh, and we have a few other things in there. Uh, we have our voice narration, same as normal. Uh, audio effects, again, same. 
the interactivity the same, and visual effects. We have a couple new things in here that we're gonna talk about. Uh, in particular, there's two areas as a Mac user that are new to me. Uh, if you're a Windows user, you have four new things in here. Uh, the first one is the blend mode, which allows you to kind of have things bleed over from one thing to the next, uh, and you can get some cool effects in there. The other one is the cursor path creator. So as I move my mouse around here, I can actually go through and just get rid of what it is and put in my own mouse. So if I had, uh, maybe I was down here, but I really wanted to be up here and I want to drag over here, I could just go through and very easily animate that all on there. I don't have to sit there and make sure my motions are perfect when I'm recording. I can easily go through and just have them set. Uh, we'll dive into both these in just a little bit. Uh, if you're on Windows, you have two other ones that are new. Uh, you have the outline edges, which I've never honestly used. I don't think it looks very nice, but each their own maybe it's useful in some situations and then the other one is the spotlight uh, down here where you can kind of just have a focus on uh, a certain spot again i've never used that but it's there uh, and then gesture effects is unchanged as well you can look at the different things they're all the same uh, so let's go back over into our visual effects and dive into our blend mode and talk about that one Okay, so in order to use blend mode, we have to have some media loaded up. I have a uh, train here that I took of, uh, this is just playing with cinematic mode on my iPhone. Uh, yay, all that's fun. Uh, and then we're going to put an image over top of it, and we're going to see what happened. Uh, and a lot of the things on blend mode seem to, I don't know, you can put all of the different stuff on there. I just grabbed a uh, picture of a rainbow to see what it does. Uh, but I also want to bring one attention to one other thing real fast. In the library, in that gradients area, these multicolor gradients, they're a little bit more than what I originally thought they were. Uh, when I go through and grab these, I can put this in here. You can see it colorizes everything, but they're also multiple colors. So I can change the color that's in there uh, based on a whole bunch of different stuff. So maybe I want it to be green and not that. I can change those out really easily. And uh, this is, again, really nice for just being able to create different looks to things. Uh, this is with it on with it off. Uh, again, it's nothing great, but for if you're grabbing just a still image or trying to make a thumbnail or doing something with this a little beyond just the basics, it looks kind of cool. Uh, so let's go jump back over here and uh, go and grab our rainbow, throw that onto the timeline and we'll make it the whole length of the clip. Uh, and then from there, we're gonna go back to visual effects and use our blend mode. Uh, so all I need to do is click, hold and drag. I'm gonna bring this down to the bottom one. And you can see that uh, certain colors allow light through and other ones don't. Over here on the right, you can see the mode that we're in is screen. And if I change the intensity, it allows more of the kind of blending to happen. Uh, when I go to 100%, it's tons of blending. Uh, but I can change my colors here. So if I really just want the reds, I can have those show through, blues, highlights. And I have the options of the midtones, shadows, or the highlights. Again, I can get some different kind of cool effects on here uh, just by changing different parts of it. Uh, we also have a whole bunch of different spots here. So if I wanted to just do normal, I can do dissolve, darken, uh, which will darken up areas. And you can see that it really does really blend in. So I can see that like, hey, here's the rainbow that I had. Um, it's just applied that kind of look over top of the whole image. So it, uh, it made it transparent, but color brought the colors itself through, uh, which is kind of cool. And depending on what you do with the uh, intensity, you can really get some neat effects here. Okay, nothing that I would really use a whole bunch, uh, but it's nice to have some options for what you're doing with that. Uh, and let's go over and uh, I'll, I'll dump a quick screen recording in here and we'll take a look at this create cursor path and we'll see what's going on with that as well. Okay, just kidding. You don't actually need to go through and have a uh, screen recording for the cursor path. It just might make more sense, but we can do it here. Uh, so we can see our tur cursor path creator. We're just going to drag that down onto our clip. Uh, and we'll get this path on here. Now, there's a couple things to notice. First off, uh, if we bring up our little pop-up here, we have our cursor path creator, uh, but we also have this little uh, blue kind of circled area here. And basically this allows us to go through and see how long this is gonna be. It's a little more important than that, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, taking a look at our properties, we can change the scale, so we can really bring this up really large. And you can see, with it being really large, let me just back it up so it's the beginning here, uh, you can see that there's no loss of quality. That mouse has not changed size as far as the quality is concerned, uh, or should I say resolution. It stays at the same resolution. And apparently you can get it up to 10,000%. Right now it's at 2,000%. Bring it all the way up to 10,000% with uh, no real loss of anything. Uh, so we can go in here and you can see that uh, I can take a look where it's at. I can choose to have uh, where it's going uh, and the same with the endpoint here as well. Uh, so I have lots of options on that. 
Uh, and over here in the editing, I also have a couple of different line types. Uh, so I can make it short smooth or not smooth and change the ease in or out, basically how it's moving. Uh, so if we just go ahead and play this clip real fast, you'll see that this will make a nice smooth loop. It goes pretty quick. Uh, maybe I want to slow it down. So all I need to do is drag out this timeline here to be a little bit longer. And we'll see that as the uh, trains come in here, this is going to make this little loop being a little bit small. Now that's all fine and good, but I can't really do much with just going from point to point. Um, maybe on a screen recording, I can do something that's very obvious that I just want to go from one to the other. That's fine. Uh, but usually what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a lot of different places where I need this mouse to go. Uh, so maybe I need it to start here um, at this car um, and it's eventually going to finish up over here at whatever this building is. Uh, but I need to have it go to uh, this building then I need to have it go to this building and then finally end up at that building. Uh, so what I can do here is on the timeline, I'm just going to bring it back. And as I drag that out, I have different points available to me and I just need to click on that point and I can set where I want the mouse to be at that particular time on the timeline. Uh, so my first one, maybe I wanted to have it on this building here. Then I'm going to move over a little bit longer. Um, I needed to have it on this little station building over here. Uh, so it's a little high right now. I can just drag it down and it will automatically adjust my curves to fit what I want. And I can also tighten them up, loosen them up, do whatever I need to do to get them to go through and do their thing. Uh, so now when I go ahead and hit my play button, uh, it will start, it will go through, do its little smooth curve, go up, come back down to the other point and then back out. Uh, this is a really cool little feature. It's not very hard to use, um, but it has lots of different options available to you uh, that will really bring some uh, especially with screen recordings. I can see this being really cool. One of the things I'd like to do uh, is for the cursor, if we could change out what that cursor is to be a hand, to be a, a ball, to be something else other than just the cursor itself, I think that'd be a really cool option for them to add on. Uh, but overall, uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, this initial iteration. Uh, Camtasia usually tends to get better with age, so they'll go through and they'll have some edits and make things improve and put more performance things on. This crashed once on me while I was making this video, um, but it's expected. It's the first day it's out, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but I'm really happy with how this thing performs overall. The export times seem to be pretty normal, uh, and there are a few more changes under the hood that I'll dive into in another video if you're interested. Uh, but for initial impressions here, uh, this library is killer. I'd still like to see some of the old stuff. Uh, and when I go into the library, um, I don't see where it's at. Maybe in Manage Library, I can import a library from old Camtasia. So I still have all my lower thirds and all that stuff here because I don't see them uh, in the default library. Uh, but really, really cool stuff here. I'm really excited. Uh, it's just going to make editing easier, more fun, and open up more options while also just saving a ton of time. Uh, and um, I'm really looking forward to diving into this thing more. Let me know if you have any questions about Camtasia 2022. I'd love to answer them. Uh, and I'll eventually get into that Audiate area and try to see what editing with that looks like. Because apparently uh, you can kind of do a screen recording and then you can go and edit the audio in Audiate. And then if you remove stuff, it will automatically update your video to reflect those changes. So it'll edit some of the stuff just with text for you, uh, which sounds interesting. I want to see how well that works. Uh, but I'm going to give it a little bit more time to work out some of the bugs and just get a little bit more stable and we'll be good. But again, let me know if there's any questions. I'd love to answer them and I'll catch you in the next one.